When it comes to Fallout, we've had two competing ideas regarding narratives. The classic idea that there is a destined antagonist that the player character must defeat, such as the way of Fallout 1, 2, 3, and the base game of Setting 6, or the introduced faction-based system where the player chooses who to align with, such as New Vegas, 4, and the Wastelanders update for 76. Let's talk about player choice versus linear destiny. So, in general, when people lobby for a linear destined path for the protagonist, they do so for the sake of a single complete story, one that may have more meat than another that has far more varied happenings. These stories are typically designed in a way that shows how a player character feels about a situation. This has been displayed a number of times in the Fallout franchise. The original Fallout featured the Vault Dweller trying to find a water chip to save the people of Vault 13 from dying to dehydration which ultimately led to the unity and the master's goal to turn humanity into super mutants, perfecting his master race. There's plenty of reasons for the Vault Dweller to care about the people and the threat of an army of powerful mutants. Fallout 2 featured the Chosen One trying to find a Gek to save his tribe of Arroyo from starvation due to a drought harming the village's stability to grow crops and keep livestock. On the way, he discovers the Enclave and has to stop them due to their ability to eliminate not only the lives of his village, but every mutated life on the planet. Vault 3 featured the Lone Wanderer trying to find their father who left Vault 101, which was now hostile. They learn about Project Purity after finding their father. The Enclave appears and they have to stop them, or they'll take control of their father's work for their own desires, which may include destroying the lives of anyone in the Capital Wasteland who has a slight non-physical mutation which is pretty much everyone. Mind you, that's only under the more extreme orders of President Eden. Some argue that the Lone Wanderer could have aligned with the Enclave, or at least Autumn's vision. But given that Dad died due to the actions of the Enclave, they do have a definite reason to distrust him, if nothing else. Fallout 76's base game featured the 76 Vault Dwellers having to stop the spread of the Scorch Plague. Otherwise, it could wipe out the final lives of the Appalachia Wasteland, their own, which would also likely spread further out. Each of these plotlines define the reasons why the protagonist cares about the quest that they're on, and why they have to follow the course of actions that they do. It either evolves their home or family ties. Truthfully, narrators often use one or both to send a protagonist out on a journey, especially in video game formats. It's very common for RPGs. It's completely sensible and is an excellent character motivation, even if the player doesn't feel any type of connection. That said, while the protagonists make their own decisions and follow the plotline for their own reasonings, it strips away the sense of player agency. And that's where the faction system comes in. So the faction system was introduced in the series to Fallout New Vegas and has been used again in Fallout 4 and to a lesser extent, the 76 Wastelanders update. Fallout New Vegas features a courier who is just waking up after Benny shot them in the head for the platinum chip. They go on a quest to the New Vegas Strip to get the chip. And on the way, they learn about the political situation of the Mojave Wasteland with the New California Republic, Caesar's Legion, and Mr. House. After getting the chip with or without getting revenge on Benny, or going straight to the NCR and skipping the chip altogether, you could choose a side with any of the three main factions, NCR, Legion, or House. Or strike out on your own with Yes Men assisting you if you wanted to be the big boss. Some argue that the courier has no real reason to care about the Mojave. After all, they're not from there. They're from further west, the home of the new California Republic. They're just making deliveries and for all intents and purposes, should probably just say, screw this job and head back west. Which to be fair, is a good point. They should be able to say that and leave. And according to Joshua Sawyer, this was joked about as a possible ending. Would have been neat to actually have. Still, without much of a reason to care, why get involved? Why bother aiding the NCR, House, or Legion? Why take over the strip for yourself? Some players may ask the game, why does the courier care about the Mojave? And for those types, this fails the basic premise of narrative construct, motivation for the protagonist. Now, this game doesn't give a reason for the courier to care, but the game asks you, why does your courier care? It could be geopolitical reasons. If the Mojave falls, the Legion could grow stronger and evade the NCR, which is the home of the courier. It could also be concern for the people of the Mojave, the friends they made along the way, something that Fallout 3 would probably agree with. I understand that you may have become sympathetic to certain individuals in your travels. Individuals this will eliminate. 
And there's even the reality that the courier may desire power, being a special agent to one army, if not the new leader of the strip. The game doesn't want to spoon feed reasons to the player, but asks the player to come up with their own reasoning. And some may label that as lazy writing. How could an author not give the protagonist motivation? However, others view this as clever. The game attempts to bridge the protagonist and the player together. It chooses not to assume that the player feels a particular way. While the types from before might see it as lazy, it really is a significant amount of work to write around such a desired attempt to bridge between player and character. There's so many possible variables to account for, different scenarios. It would be a lot easier to simply tell the player what the protagonist thinks and believes. Of course, whether that is a satisfactory narrative to some is another matter. Some do not want to be the character, but want to see their story unfold. Freedom of choice without a given character motivation, but only freedom to insert your own motivation is not their desired taste. I focused a bit on New Vegas, but that's because the next game falls into a very similar situation with many of the same elements. Fallout 4 starts the player character off in much of a similar manner as one of the linear main quest games. The sole survivor has a family, their spouse gets killed, their son gets stolen, and they go off on an adventure to find their son. On their adventure, they learn about the politics of the Commonwealth Wasteland and find out about the Institute, the Railroad, the Minutemen, and the Brotherhood of Steel. After finding the son, learning about his history, the sole survivor, or rather the player, may choose who to side with. Much like New Vegas, the faction choice is all about the reasonings of the player. While the sole survivor should arguably care about doing what their son wants, after all, their offspring is the whole reason they did everything, the reality is that the player may not really, you know, give a damn. They knew the baby for all of five minutes and could easily rationalize this biologically 60-year-old man isn't really the sole survivor's kid through any other means than, well, biology. Sean didn't grow up with his parents. At this point, it becomes about what the player wants to do with the Commonwealth, much like what they wanted to do with the Mojave. And while the Soul Survivor did live in the Commonwealth before the Great War, the nukes kinda changes a lot. Everything the Soul Survivor basically had was gone. Is this really their home now? Or just a hollow shell of what it once was? This is the point where the game asks, what does your Soul Survivor want? Do they care about the ones they met? Did they build a home and sanctuary? Do you believe in the words of Sean and the Institute? It's largely the same identity of the second half of New Vegas, but the Soul Survivor may have some land-based sentiments to keep them around, even if there's nothing else really left. Now, the Wastelanders update for 76 has a lot less to it. The 76 Overseer and the 76 Dweller find out about the old American supply of gold stashed away in a vault. The 76 Dwellers really only care about the gold because, well, that's what their Overseer cares about. Who hopes that I'll build an actual economy in the Appalachia Wasteland? which may be true given it's desired by both the Foundation Settlers and the Crater Raiders. Honestly, the character motivation for choosing one to help them with the highest is the same. They both, you know, can get to it. The player just may choose one or the other because they like the characters more or trust them more than the others. It's not much really, but still, it can make some people happy that the options exist. Honestly, the debate comes down to whether one prefers character motivation or player motivation. It's interesting in a way, whether the self should be respected in a narrative sense or whether the self should be ignored for the sake of a fictional story's sense of fluid motion. That said, if one of my old surveys have accurate information, factions are very, very popular, and it's really unlikely to step away from Bethesda's games for quite a while, Fallout in particular. Still, for those who prefer character motivation, it really does matter what the protagonist thinks and why they go on an adventure. Family or personal reasons protecting the life that they want to lead, the player is completely unimportant to the equation. Meanwhile, for those who prefer the player motivation, the ability to choose how the reality unfolds is a very important aspect. They feel like it respects player wishes with a pure bounty of options. It doesn't matter if the player character doesn't have a motivation or personality, the players themselves do. One will ask, why does protagonist care? The other one will ask, why do I care? And this may get to the heart of a question. What is role-playing? What does it mean to role-play in a game? Is role-playing to my own desires the same as playing to the role that the game assigns me? Though perhaps that is a question for a future video. For now, what are your thoughts about Fallout games having narrative choices in the main quest? Do you like to have factions to decide with, or do you think that the player character should be able to make their own choices, regardless of what the player Thanks.